In Hell at Loose, there is a crap ton of different types of armor or tanks in the game of Hell at Loose. You've got your heavies, you got your mediums, you got your light tanks. But if there's one armor type or vehicle type that is truly misused or underrated at the very least, it's the Armored Recon or the Recon Vehicles. Armored Recon, which is how I'm going to refer to these vehicles moving forward in the video, are very misused. A lot of times you'll find these vehicles being basically used as frontline main battle tanks, and that's just not the way to play them. They're too lightly armed and armored to deal with really any major threat, whether that be a AT rocket soldier or even a light tank, let alone a medium or heavy, comes across your path. So, with all these issues in mind, why not make a video about it? So, that's what I'm here to do today. I'm here to talk to you about how to play recon vehicles correctly, and a new little series I'm going to be doing with all the armored vehicles in the game. When it comes to Armored Recon, let's understand some basic characteristics of these type of vehicles. They're very fast, but they're very lightly armed and lightly armored. And this goes for any of the other factions you play, whether it be Germany, America, Britain, the Russians, doesn't matter. Now, when it comes to the Armored Recon, the crew composition or crew layout is the same as any other tank. You've got a driver, a gunner, and a spotter. But the recon vehicles can carry up to two more people, meaning you can carry up to five people in a recon vehicle or armored recon. This means you can maybe drive two officers around, pick up the commander and drive him where he needs to, or just two random infantrymen, it doesn't matter. And being able to ferry around two other people, whether that be infantry or officers, can be a situational upside. Just depends on how you see it and what happens during a battle. Now, let's talk about the main upside of a recon vehicle or, or armor recon. They are very, very fast. So unlike all the other tanks in the game, they have manual transmissions. The recon vehicle or armor recon does not have this. They have automatic transmissions, which means you don't have to cycle through gears once you get up to a certain RPM. So when doing this, you can maneuver around the battlefield very, very quickly without having to, like I said, change gears, which can make deployment times and being able to move around the battlefield a lot smoother and just a lot faster. Now, this unfortunately does come at a cost. You have very little armor, only enough to really take on small arms fire, and a very light gun that can't stand up to really any armor. Any tanks can pierce your armor and any rocket soldier can do damage to your hull or just any component without any penalty. But even with that, there's still a chance that you might survive taking a hit from something or someone. It just depends on where you get hit and by what. If you take damage in the tires, the high chances are that you will be pretty much immobilized. You'll be able to move, but very, very slowly. But you will survive. Now, if you get hit in the hull, everything will one-shot you except recon tank armor-piercing rounds. Now, if you're using a high-explosive round, you will one-shot a recon tank if you hit them in the hull. Don't ask me why this is a thing, that's just how the game is. And if you take a hit in the turret by another tank or a recon tank, you will typically survive the first hit, but you usually won't survive the second one. So let's get to a role of a recon vehicle or armor recon. Essentially, you're, well, kind of as the name suggests, your reconnaissance and logistics rating. So what that means is you should not be brawling other tanks unless absolutely necessary. Instead, you should be reporting their position to the team and letting the other bigger, badder, medium, and heavy tanks deal with the other armor, or at least letting the other officers know so that their AT soldiers can potentially engage the enemy tanks. Now, besides avoiding the other tanks and just calling them out, what you can do in terms of a firepower perspective is go behind the lines in the red zone and do logistics raiding. Essentially, hunting down supply trucks, garrisons, destroying supply crates, and just making the enemy's war effort a little bit worse off than it was before. So in this clip here, I found the fourth point on offensive on Carantan, and I just started destroying stuff, looking for garrisons and so on. And you can do this even if you're a one-man, doing simple reconnaissance work and behind the line sabotage. Now, a big tool in your arsenal, especially if you're in the spotter's position of the recon vehicles, is that you have access to a radio set. No other vehicle in the game has this. And essentially what it is, is a dome that covers a certain area that you can essentially take a picture of and report that on the map and basically say, hey, there's people here. 
And I'm showing this off here because on any other map, it can be kind of hard to utilize this tool in a way that you truly understand it. But on a map like Grimoggin, you can see what it truly looks like so you know what to expect when you use the radio set. Now, this does take at least two minutes to reload and you have to be in the spawn position at all times while it's reloading. So just keep that in mind when using the radio set and getting intelligence photos. And for those of you truly wondering what it looks like on a map, well, I took a snapshot of the enemy's northern spawn and I found a truck and a tank. Now, although the main role is to sabotage the behind the lines and report back your findings to your command, you aren't completely useless against tanks. But going up against other tanks at all is kind of hard. Your light cannons in general cannot pierce the front and side armor of medium and heavy tanks. And even against some light tanks, it can potentially struggle to pierce its armor depending on where you're hitting it. But if you're able to get behind the enemy armor, you can inflict some damage to both the engine components and the overall hull of the tanks in question. Now let me make one thing clear with this though. A competent two or three man tank crew will be able to deal with a recon tank effectively even if you get the drop on it. This is because it requires too many shots to kill a medium or a heavy before you're truly found out and dealt with by these enemy tanks. But if you deal with a, an experienced tank crew or a one man that is just by himself, you can do some really hefty damage and potentially kill them, potentially helping your frontline allies and actually giving your team some breathing room at the cost of very little, even if the risk is very high. One way you could do this is actually to be a distraction, essentially a bait and switch. If you know you have other allied tanks that can do some damage to the vehicles, but need a bit of a opening to truly open fire on these tanks, fire one or two rounds at them, hopefully you'll damage the back of the tank, and you'll get them to turn around and look at you. All the while, your other tanks will move into position and hopefully destroy the tank. At least in theory, this is something you could do. Obviously, execution could be a bit more complex, but I think you get the understanding of what I'm talking about here. And yes, you might see the last two clips and think, oh, I can do donuts around these tanks. Well, there's plenty of clips that I could have probably included that include me failing at doing what you're seeing right now. So just take these with a pinch of salt. Now, what do you have to do to take out every other tank in the game? Say you have to tango with some armor and you gotta get the job done. So if you are facing another recon vehicle or armored recon, here's what you need to use if you're using armor piercing. So on the front plate, side plate, and rear plate, you only need two shots. If you're targeting the turret, you'll need four. And if you're targeting the vehicle tracks, in this case, the wheels, it's gonna take upwards about eight shots to kill. But if you're firing high explosive rounds at the recon vehicles, then you will actually one shot the recon vehicles, or armed recon. How this is, I don't know. Talk to the devs on that one. Going on from there, we have the light tank. So if you're trying to pierce it from the front, you will ricochet or not penetrate. If you're targeting the side plate, it'll take about three armor piercing shots. For the turret, it's going to take upwards of five, depending on the circumstance and where you hit the turret. The rear plate, it'll take three armor piercing shots and tracks. It's just, it's going to be too much. You're going to be dead by the time you get up towards probably five or six shots if you're trying to aim for the track. So I'm not even going to mention that number. Now, another thing as well, if you're firing HE or high explosive at the light tanks, you will one-shot them if you target the rear or back plate of the light tanks. Again, we don't know why this is. Talk to the devs. Moving on to mediums and heavies, they're pretty self-explanatory. You're not gonna pierce the front or the sides of either of these tanks. For medium tanks, it's gonna take upwards of four armor piercing shots to kill it. No HE rounds will do any damage. And then you can destroy the tracks, but it won't cause any hull damage. And then for the heavies, it's kind of the same deal, except one more shot for each. So you'll need five shots to kill a heavy tank if you're hitting it in the rear plate, and five shots to completely destroy the tracks. Again, causing no hull damage. Now there's one thing I do want to touch on in particular, as I did mention it earlier in the video, about even being a one-man, you can do a lot of things I've mentioned, which is still true, but you're not going to be as efficient unless you have at least a two-man or better. If you can at least have a two-man where you can have a driver and a gunner, you'll be a lot more efficient in being able to disrupt the enemy's backline operations and potentially engage enemy tanks in a pinch. So essentially some of what you need to be doing as a recon vehicle or armored recon is very simple when you look at it. 
get behind the lines in the red zone, or at least behind the enemy, sabotage their backline garrisons, supply trucks, half tracks, and anything that could damage the enemy's war effort, and if necessary, distract enemy tanks for heavier armor to engage. And overall, gather a reconnaissance of enemy vehicles and infantry movements to report back to your allies so they can be better prepared to engage them in battle. And overall, with a little bit of patience and a little bit of stealth, you can really make this vehicle be one of the best vehicles in the game if used correctly. Even if it can't engage other tanks directly, it can still do a lot of espionage work, essentially, to help your team win the overall game as a whole. Now, I hope you got something out of the video today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.